All right, here we go again. Uh, I feel like we've done this already, but considering that the fight was supposed to happen on April 27th, it's been postponed, it's now moved to May 25th. It's only right to talk about it again. Josh Taylor versus Jack Hatchell, fingers crossed. No more postponements with this fight, because I feel like it's on, off, on, off for a couple of years now. It's holding up both careers. Yeah, and we don't, we don't want to see that because they're two world-class fighters. Yeah. So we need to see it happen as soon as possible and no hold-up for either fighter. Yeah. Um, let's talk about what we're hearing is an injury to Josh Taylor's eye. Mm. My concern for Jack Catchell in this one is if it's an eye injury, surely that means Josh Taylor doesn't spar. Like, surely there's a limit to how much he can spar. How much is he going to be ready and prepared for another day? I don't want to piss on anyone's parade but it's very rare that the fighter will actually tell the truth of what the injury is. Okay. So I wouldn't believe it was an eye at all. Okay. When I've had injuries in the past, it only happened to me once in my career. Uh, it was against Oval McKenzie going into the rematch, and uh, I put out to the media and the press that it was an injury I'd hit my rib, mm. when in fact I hadn't, I'd hit my hand. Smart. So I, I wouldn't put out, I, I wouldn't, I'd take that with a pinch of salt. So you'll be a Mr. Conspiracy theorist, Tony Bell. You I'm might be right not, here. I'm no, you might be right so here as well because he was seen at the British Boxing Board of Control Awards hmm. uh, a couple of weeks back. And I asked someone that was there, I said, did you see anything wrong with his eye? And they're like, no. I'm like, oh, okay. Could just be some kind of groin strain, hamstring strain, I don't know. So, But it's, not, it's nothing seriously major because it would have put him out the fight and the delay would not have been as short as it is. I also can't see it being the eye with it being, is it six weeks later that we're going ahead yep. with this? I just can't see it being the eye mm. because as you said, you wouldn't be sparring. Yeah. And sparring is key. So a little kind of twinge on a hamstring, a groin or, or a foot or a hand, I don't, something like that could put it, you know, an extra six weeks on top. Okay, but we do know one thing, whether or not it's the eye, the hand, whatever, we know there's an injury. Oh yeah. Does that change your thoughts and predictions about the fight? No. Or does it still remain what it was, which is what? What was it before? Not again, at all. Me? Uh, did you swing towards Josh or did you go Jack? I was basically sitting on the fence. Okay. Fair. Uh, a part of me points towards Josh Taylor and I'm taking it seriously. But then there's a big part of me that goes, that first fight was just so overwhelming. Mm. But do you know what? I don't want to nail me colours to the mast. Do me. it. That's what you've always done. You've I always know, done this. But if I had to be forced to pick a winner, I'd probably pick Josh Taylor. Yeah. Still, even though there could be a problem behind the scenes. I don't know. It's just it's so difficult to pick because, mm. I mean, before the first fight, I was just picking Josh hands down, no problem yeah. at all. But after that first fight, it'd be, it's like the two different fighters now because of that fight. Mm. Yeah. You know what I did do? Sorry to cut across you. You know what I did watch the other day? Just to remind myself of... Because the way people talk about Josh falling off and he's no longer the guy. I watched the Teofimo Lopez fight again. Mm. Teofimo won that. Obviously, won it quite comfortably. But Josh wasn't as bad as people say he was. And bear in mind, Teofimo is considered by everyone as the number one 140-pounder. My point is he got beat by the number one guy. But you forget that. Number one. But you forget he was the undisputed number one guy once upon a going time. Going into that. He was, he was unbeaten going into that fight That's on, what the, I'm on saying. the record. So, so you can't... I'm just not sure. What about the weight? Because I, I do remember Josh after the first Jack fight. There was a lot of talk about this is it. I'm going to 147. Yeah. The weight was a problem. Here we are nearly two years later mm. and he's still at 140. I mean, but, but there's also been a big camp it? switch. There's also been a camp switch. So he's gone to a new trainer. Yeah. Uh, has he shown him a way that makes him and allows him to make weight a lot more safely and and earlier? Mm. Because to be fair, he looked in great shape at that press conference. Yeah, he did. I did the face off as well, and I have to be honest with you, he already looked like he was chiselled. Chiselled. Chiselled already. Think so. That's why I, I just think the move of, of camp has done the world of good. Lifestyle I'd, change. Potentially, so you're not bored. Potentially, enough. yes. Well, I do know he's living in Liverpool, so you know, and, and I know he's with an unbelievably gifted trainer, Joseph Mack and Declan O'Rourke. Yeah. As is Jack as, Catchell as, yeah, and Jamie Moore. And Jamie so Moore. Brilliant yeah. in them too. brilliant coaches in them too. Jamie Moore and Nigel Travis are a match made in heaven. They're a brilliant team. So this, I, I am sitting on the fence. I, I do edge towards Josh purely based on the fact of his resume and the wins he's got. Mm. And then now with this new link up with, with Joe Mack and them, he's going to come a lot better prepared. Mm. This this isn't a shock to him now. He knows what he's going in with. I think the first time it was quite easy to overlook. It was a homecoming defence. Uh, it was all made for him. It was all set up nice in his hometown. First fight like after that. becoming undisputed as well. That's what I'm saying. So I just think 
he, he did overlook Jack Cattrall the first time, and I think he thought, this is a gimme. Yeah. I'll get this job done, it's easy. You know, what's, who's Jack Cattrall beat? That was the top and bottom of it. But now he goes into thinking, wow, this guy really pushed me. Even if he thinks he won, which he's the only person on the planet who thinks he won, even if he thinks he won, he, he knows, knows he was in pushed. Yeah, he knows. he knows he's pushed to the limit. We did the Dalton Smith fight the other day, uh, Dalton Smith versus yeah. Jose Zapeda, and this isn't to compare Dalton to any of these guys, but what we did see was the top five 140 pounders in the world. Yeah. Again, Josh was that guy, wasn't he? He was that guy for yeah. so many years, top five guy, yeah. number one guy. How difficult and how far <coughs> away are both Josh and Jack from that list? So it had Teofimo Lopez, it had Devin Haney on there had Mateus on there, the, all, all the top dogs were on there. Yeah. Those two weren't. How far away are those two now? The winners amongst them. Okay. The losers, Fair. no. Mm. And that's, just, that, that's just the brutal side of boxing. One, one fight it doesn't define your career, but one fight determines which path you're going to go on. Mm. The loser of this fight's got to rebuild. And I would assume if it's Josh, it's a move up in weight. If it's a win, I, I, I don't know. I just, he's not going to be Tiafimo Lopez. No version of Josh Taylor beats Tiafimo Lopez. Can he beat some of the others? Potentially, yes. Can he beat a Devon? No. Mm. Okay. No. Too, too good on the back foot. Yeah. A exceptional counter puncher. Really, really good counter puncher. So a one four seven jump, win or lose, could be the option for Josh Taylor. I think really. it's the only option. Just because it's a. If, if you're Josh Taylor. You get a win, you jump to 147, you fight Conor Ben. Yeah. Mouth watering. Yeah. That would be nasty there. Interesting press conference. That would That's be. what I'm saying. So it would it would it would gather attention, it would attract, it would cross over to Jump because Conor Ben's a huge name. Say whatever you want about Conor Ben, the kid's a huge name. Mm. And and, and he, he demands views. Okay, uh, random question. Let's just have fun with it now. Okay. Um, how far is Dalton Smith from either of these guys? 12 months. Mm. I think a huge puncher, an underrated puncher, extremely accurate, just very, very good, I mm. I just think he's very, very good. I think he's not the quickest, but he makes up with it because he's so accurate. All right, Dalton Smith, amongst the other 13,000 that are going to be at the first Direct Arena, will be uh, eagerly watching this one uh, because yeah. this is a great fight. We've been waiting two years. In fact, nearly two and a half years by the time the fight rolls around May 25th. Live from the First Direct Arena, live on the zone. This shall be a good one. Tony, no fence it. And I'm going to give you my prediction as well. Who do you think is going to win? Who are you picking? Jack. I'm picking Jack Cattrall. Um, I, I, I didn't pick him the first time around. He surprised mm. me. Um, and I think, I almost feel like he deserves to win because he should be. We should be looking at Jack That's Cattrall the thing as we can't do here. I, well, I, we can't do that He here. deserves to win. He should be undisputed. I, I fully agree with you. 100% Jack Cattrall should have been undisputed, light welterweight champion of the world. But, and I say but, two wrongs don't make a right. And the only other reason I'm picking him as well is because it looks like, or we, at least we know this, Josh has got a injury. I don't know what it is. It could be his big toe. It could be his fingernail. Could be there's an injury toe. somewhere. <laughs> uh, there's an injury somewhere. Do you know what? I see why you're making it. And, and I just, I, I'm struggling to pick. But if I'm forced to pick, I'm going to go with Josh Taylor on points. Yeah, yeah. We shall see. Yeah. Well, well, well I think we're one-one so far. We are. Are we one-one? Yeah, well, I think we are most recently because yeah. you. Who did you pick last time out? And I said, I told you so. Oh yeah. If you told me so, you forget the other ones that I've won. Oh, Jordan, Jordan, Jordan Gill. Yeah, okay, fair. Yeah. Big one. Big one. That's a big one. I did tell Eddie Hearn and Frank Warren as well. Are you getting tough about Jordan? Not yeah. Frank Warren. I did tell Eddie Hearn and yeah. Frank Smith as well. We definitely didn't tell the first the, uh, the last. <laughs> Definitely didn't, Definitely didn't tell him. Sure, All right, we'll see you. May 25th, live in the zone. The whole team will be there, as will these two fantastic fighters. Should be a great fight. And as Tony said, the winner um, goes on to, I think, have big fights, 140 pound division. The loser, rebuilding job. Rebuilding job. We'll see you then.
Jack Catchell should be the undisputed champion. It's an embarrassment, but he was walking on the punches. Jack Catchell's been screwed here. Josh by one round, one thirteen, one twelve. Yeah, right. Tough fight to score. Never in a million years he win that fight. The ring man won the fight. He doesn't believe that. Josh Taylor against Jack Catchell rematch works. There was not a single doubt in my mind that I'd win the fight. He'll soon realise that he didn't win that fight. It's one of, if not the worst decisions that I've ever seen. His career is kind of got lost. It's inexcusable. You must know lost that. Character. How can we all be wrong? It wasn't a close fight. Well, I thought. There was only one minute. I feel like it was a close fight, one that could have gone either way. No, oh, it's as much as Eddie's. Jack Catcher was robbed. I want to change out on the next day. It's going to be a long time from night from. When I beat him, is finished. I'm going to outbox someone. I just want to get in there and give him my beat down. Taylor, where are you? Let's have it.